How did you and Scott come up with deciding to go over to a WF? Just didn't have a out. choice. Right. Yeah, didn't have a choice. Was my brother attacked Watts, and that was it. Hmm. Initial impressions of Vince McMahon, and how how would you compare it to locker rooms? First night we were there uh, in Green Bay, nails, chokes out Vince, and beats the shit up. He has John Nord and a couple guys watch the door, and he beats up Vince or slaps him or does whatever. And uh, and then says there's sexual harassment and all this shit. Um, I mean, my first initial impressions, I thought, okay, this he's a businessman. Um, he seems sincere. Uh, sounds like he, you know, he, he wants to do good. Uh, sounds everything sounds good. But then you, you work for him for a little bit, and you know, he's just a, you know, just like he's on TV. You know, he's just a liar and. I mean, it's his money, his company, I guess he pretty much do what he wants, but I just wish he'd have a little bit more respect for the guys and treat them a little bit better than what he does, you know. What do you do with you and your brother as far as? <clears throat> well, when we were there, it was a time when he was, the uh, black guy was sucking toes and uh, had all this problem with the transporting underage kids across the state lines and then the steroid thing about the, uh, they were coming down on him with all that. And, and then he, he was he bought Ica Pro and that was doing shitty and um, he brought in some I can't remember the guy's name some guy that was doing the testing. Uh, he was doing the what? Doing the testing. Mm -hmm. Olympic so he tested Olympic athletes. His name was D uh, D O. Uh, you know, he was a doctor that was doing the tests. Remember? Oh, no. Anyway, he was doing the test and this guy supposedly he couldn't do anything. Of getting by, right? And uh, he, I remember one time he called me up and said, uh, "You tested dirty." Uh -huh. I said, "You're full of shit." And I went down that day and did the same test with Smith Klein and Beecher and sent him the test up. And his wife called me and said, "I hope we're not going to have a problem." And I said, "No, I just I know I didn't test dirty, and, right. you know, and I'm not, I can't afford to sit home for three months or whatever the thing was." And he goes, "Well, I'll send you your." Your SummerSlam check and all this, and I said, no, I can't do it. I said, either I'm going to work or I'm not. So then, like a week later, he put me back to work, and he, he you know, he promised, you know, we signed a, uh, an initial deal, which was, wasn't bad, and then he said, well, you're going to be able to do this and make this, and you know, do his merchandise, and you know, we're, we're going to do all this stuff with this. Right. And he pretty much had his mercy because if you don't do it, you know, it, it don't happen, you don't make the money, and then he, he told me, well, uh, the merchandise isn't doing well and I said well you control the merchandise you know either you spoof us up or spiff us up or however you do it to get us over so the merchandise does sell or I mean it's all up to you I mean we don't have no control over it. if I control it I'd be able to sell my merchandise right. so I mean it was always uh, you know always button heads until it came to that one point where we were in some town in, in New York and my brother once again <laughs> Cornered him again, screamed and hollered at him, and, and um, he let us out of our deal, and we were gone. Were you guys told to soften your style down when you first got up there? Um, uh, he didn't want us hurting anybody. Right. You know, that's what he told us. He said, I, you know, I, I respect you guys' style and everything, but uh, um, guys aren't going to want to work with you, and I need you to just, I just don't want you hurting anybody. So... Was it different seeing Ric Flair in the locker room as a small fish in a big pond this time in the WF? Yeah, um, it, it, you know, you kind of just kind of laugh, you know, right. about, you know, or deep down you just kind of laugh. And I, I, my brother, you know, he, my brother loved it because my brother hates it, just just right. spies the guy, so he he really ate it up. But yeah, you know, it's, there's there's I mean, there's a handful of guys that I have that you know I just man, he just got a good word to say about him, you know. What was Hulk Hogan like at the time? Um, he was on a different level, you know. When we went to the first time, Macho Man was there. Right. Um, Hulk was there. And I remember uh, Boss Man was there a little bit for a little while, and he was on his way out. Um, so there's a few guys, and my brother got along with Macho and everything, so we talked to him a little bit about what was going on. And I remember one time we talked to, to uh, Hogan about what was going on, and he kind of... 
you know, he kind of gave us, you know, the, the scoop. Right. You know, he was he was pretty upfront, you know. For you know, I, I don't know how you know I know of him, and I can I can say hi to him. I've been to his house, I've been on his boat, I've done a few things with him, but um, you know, I, I don't really know the guy that well. You know, whether whether you know tell what his character is, right. he's right or wrong, or tell me the truth or not. So. I don't know. Did things change up there when Hogan quit and Brett took the ball? Um, yeah, I, I think they're at a point there and now they're just kind of grasping. They were already in the shit, you know, with all the the court right and, and testing and yeah, the sexual. Sh I mean, there was so much shit going on. Then when Hulk left, it was like uh, they, you know, now it dropped down to another level, you know, and, and Brett tried to pick it up and. You know, there's just no way he was going to do it. How did Shawn Michaels change over time? Um, I never, you know, I knew of Shawn in the beginning when he was with Marty. And I knew that Marty was a big river, and I knew the girls and and all that. Um, and I know when we got up there, I know he got to be friends with uh, Kevin and uh, Scott Hall. And I know Mar Mar uh Sean was too well liked, you know, because I talked to Kurt, you know, I, I was friends with Kurt and with Boss Man, a lot of those guys. So they, they really didn't have anything good to say about Sean, and that's when he was getting right. control. And, and so there was a lot of animosity there. When we were there, I never had a problem with him. Um, I talked to him a few times about finishes and stuff, and uh, he's the one that came up with the Quebec rules on a thing for that right. wrestling those guys. And, what are your so, thoughts on some of the matches you had with him? Um, I, I think, uh, um, oh, the taller one, what's his name? Shock. Shock. I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to say about him either. Huh. Uh, Pierre, Pierre wasn't bad, he tried, he's, you know, he, he, he'd work with you, he'd take bumps and stuff, and just, Shock's another one of those guys, just underhanded, but, right. you know, he just did everything he could to get himself. Uh, do whatever he had to. Was, I don't have nothing good to say about him. Do you have any memories of your match with uh, Owen and Brett? Yeah, that was probably uh, that, that match. It was up. That was the same night we got let go. Or no, it was it was before that. It was before that. It was in that same town though. But uh, uh, I remember Brett saying, you know, um, we can have a hell of a match here and all this stuff. And we pretty much called it out in the ring, you know, for, for, for a few things, but. Yeah, but Brett pretty much called it. Owen called it. My brother called it. We, you know, we all just called it in the ring. It was, it was one of the better ones. You know, rates up there with Lex and Sting's match we had. And how many other ones? I think it was like the '94 Royal Rumble. You and your brother were eliminated one and two. Was that punishment? You think? Yeah, we were supposed to go out there. Well, he wanted us to go out there and fight each other. And if you remember right, we went out there and didn't do nothing. Right. Right. We just I got out there, looked at him, and waited for the next guy to come in. All right. So then I sent word, you guys are out. So <laughs> that was that was another part of the end. All right. You know, what actually led you guys leaving? Um, I think it was you know a combination of Vince promising us everything and not coming through with anything, uh, and not making the money that he said we were going to make, um, and uh, just the matches and having them working with the Quebecers and. You know, just I could pro and just he was going through so much shit that during then. You know, and he wasn't focused on wrestling and it just it, it was just the most one of the miserable times of my, my life was being up there working for him. I, I don't have anything good up other than travel around with Owen Hart, you know. Right. That was a blast, but other than that, you know, it's just Did he try to screw you guys on the way out? No. He uh -huh. actually uh that's the only one thing he did. He he said he he would give us our release. And we had it, and he gave it to us, and we were gone. You know, I think we were one of the first ones to, we told him, well, if you're not going to pay us, let us go to Japan and make up some of this money. We knew what we were going to do all along. Right, right. And uh, so he did. He, he let us do it. He signed that, and then he never let anybody else do that from then on. But um, I guess that's one of the good things. He didn't let us go. It's not a problem.